Welcome to our time of devotions. We are delighted that you have joined us. Let us begin as we love to begin by listening to some beautiful piano music. The devotion for today, Friday, October 29th, is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 24 through 30. Hear the word of God. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field, but while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not grow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Open our hearts and minds, O God, to the word just read and the words to come, that they might point to you, the word made flesh, Jesus the Christ. It is in his name that we pray, amen. So today we get the parable of weeds among wheat. Jesus used parables to break through our deafness and our hardness of heart. To Jesus' audiences, the parables covered common ground. The people knew about sheep and shepherds, lost coins, vineyards, unjust judges, farmers, and farming. These stories tend to draw us in softly and often leave us breathless and pondering our tightly held convictions. Megan McKenna calls parables the arrows of God. They pierce us and make us painfully aware of our need to change the way we, re the way we relate to ourselves, others, and God. Well, this parable seems fairly straightforward. The farmer has sown good seed, but during the night, an enemy tossed weeds among the wheat. The servants are nervous, and they have only two questions. A theological question, how can this be? And an ethical question, what should we do about it? The servants of the farmer ask him if it's true that he did indeed sow only good seed on his field, a question to which they know the answer, and so they immediately come to the real question, then where did these weeds come from? Well, that's the problem of evil, perhaps the most frequently raised question in the church. If God is a God of love, why is there so much? Why is there any evil in the world? Well, we all know by now that post-Eden, we do indeed live in a world full of broken promises, broken spirits, and broken people. We also know that God created a world that was very good, and that one day we will be restored to God's good and perfect kingdom. We can't earn this reconciliation. It is pure gift given by the grace of God through Jesus Christ our Lord. In the meantime, 
We are stuck out in the field with wheat and weeds, good and evil, all mingled together in our church, in our communities, in our homes, and even in ourselves. Well, the servants are eager to fix the problem. They run out to the fields. They're going to do it right now and pull out those darn weeds. But the farmer is patient and filled with love and compassion. You see, in trying to rid the field of weeds, the unintended consequence would be to lose some of the precious wheat whose roots aren't as deep or as strong yet as the weeds. The farmer isn't willing to lose one stalk of wheat. And who knows, perhaps the servants cannot even tell for sure which one is a weed and which one is wheat. Either way, we learn that we must coexist until the time of the harvest, that is, the time of judgment. You see, one of the central doctrines of Jesus' teaching in the Gospel of Matthew is that there is such a judgment, and it is for this reason that Jesus can forbid our judgments and our anti-evil crusades. Jesus believes that at the end of history, there will be a reckoning and we don't have to worry about anyone but ourselves. But oh, don't we just love to make our little judgments along the way? We base them on that which we can see. Things like behavior and clothing and piercings and tattoos. Do you remember the story of the man who was on a train with his four children? The kids were acting out in all sorts of ways. They were running up and down the aisles, making too much noise, bumping into the good people who were sitting quietly reading their newspaper. Finally, one man became so irritated by the unruly children that he snapped at the father to control his children. The father replied, I am so sorry. You see, we are just returning from burying their mother and I guess they just don't know how to act. By the appearance of bad behavior, we are quick to judge. But what if we were to hear the story of the people who look or act a certain way? In a similar way, social media can be so harmful to those who are consuming it. We look at their beautiful children, their fabulous vacations and perfect homes, and then we feel bad about ourselves and our lives. My friend Christine reminds me to not judge our insides to somebody else's outsides. So we truly are not in a position to be judging who is a weed and who is wheat. Only God knows our insides. Now, as we take a look at this parable ag again, here is the question to ask ourselves. Are we weeds or are we maturing into wheat? At the harvest, there are only two ends, bundling to burn or being gathered into the barn. I like how McKenna adds, where is the barn? Does living in the field lead to living in the barn? Or is the barn just a temporary place? Does the real parable begin with remembering what wheat is planted for? That is, for the making of bread, for the feeding of the earth and the children of the earth. This wheat, this bread, is the substance of life. And how does one grow? Well, seeds grow, we know, with sun, water, time, sometimes cultivation, but seeds also can grow without attention. Certainly weeds seem to do just fine on their own. Well, what is sun, water, time, cultivation for wheat? For those in the field becoming bread for the world, the sun of justice, the water of baptism, the times of the year, ordinary and extraordinary times of liturgy, the healing and the practice of scripture, this, the discipline of community, the corporal and spiritual works of mercy, the tendering of hope, of forgiveness and reconciliation. 
We have lots of practice with the weeds all around us, sharing the same ground, the same sun, water, time, and cultivation. Well, if you're like me, you grow the most during times of struggle, either internally tending to my own shadow side or with others whose behavior and actions trouble me. I learned a long time ago to stay with that which provokes me because God has a lesson for me to learn all in the process of maturing and transforming just a bit more into that good stalk of wheat. Will you pray with me? Slow us down enough, O Lord, to listen to the stories of those around us. Give us grace and patience with our neighbors and with ourselves. Help us not to judge, but to reflect your grace and mercy. Teach us how to dwell in peace so that others may have a chance to live and grow to mature and come to their promised fulfillment. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.